Welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church in Plymouth. I'm thankful for the spirit who gathers us together and breathes life into us, joins us with others around the world as the body of Christ. So whether you are here in person or online, we are grateful that you have found your way here this morning. We continue to journey our way through the book of Acts um, in this season of Easter, and today, over the course of their travels, Paul and Silas meet up with a woman named Lydia. Their meeting is not what either of the two men had planned, and yet what follows is a sharing and receiving of gifts that helps to spark the um, early church in Philippi. Um, and today we are also celebrating 13 students who are being confirmed at the 1045 service. So you will notice that the color of the day is red. Um, you can see this in our candles, in our banners, and our stoles uh, to signify the coming of the Holy Spirit among us. With that, welcome again to Mount Olivet. Please stand as you are able for our Thanksgiving for baptism. Trinity, one God who saves and sends us with love that lives forever. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we give thanks for the mercy and forgiveness that wrap our true selves in sacred belonging and purpose. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. For a word at the dawn of creation which spoke water and life into being. For the great flood that revealed nature's power and God's commitment to life after death. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. For the river that carried Moses safely, building a bridge between mothers and nations. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. For the rock split open in the desert, spilling water for those thirsting for freedom. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. For the one who turned water to wine and met a woman at the well with living water. Thanks be to God. For the gift of holy baptism which declares there are no more God forsaken places and nothing can separate us from a love of God in Jesus for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. God of life, we rejoice with the waters that cover creation. Our songs of praise echo their dancing tides and streams. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this community and all of creation. Cleanse our fears, drown our divisions. Give us mercy and grace to drink so that our whole lives are signs of death defeated and thirst quenched. Thanks to the risen Jesus, the Son of God. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. of life. Stir up in us the gift of your spirit so we can offer what we have to share. Move us to the places and people where your love will ignite. Guide our lives day by day. Amen. You may be seated. The reading is from the 16th chapter of Acts, starting with the ninth verse. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. So Timothy, Paul, and Silas set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, 
where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyathra and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. Word of God, word of life. God's grace and peace to you, all of us gathered here at church, and to everyone online this morning. Amen. It was Labor Day weekend of 1999, and I was freshly divorced. My sister knew I needed time away with a different view, so she had planned a trip out to the East Coast. And through very strange circumstances, our flights were canceled. I was ready to throw in the towel to go back home to be sad by myself for another weekend. My brother-in-law had different plans. Put your bags in the car, Beth. We are driving to Door County for the weekend. Instead of a view of the Atlantic Ocean, it would be Clark Lake. His grandparents lived there, and with a quick call, he let them know that his family, plus me, would be there in time for dinner. I hadn't spent time with his grandparents and the thought of spending a weekend with people I did not know very well felt like a little too much for me, but I went anyway. Their names were Bert and June, and I smelled the pot roast in the oven the moment they opened the door to their home. It's not easy making small talk with someone who used to be married. Questions like, what's new? Or how have you been? Fall short quickly, but they jumped right in. June, an artist, showed me where she painted and took me on a gallery walk of her paintings hung throughout the house. Bert shared stories of their time in Florida teaching me about grapefruit trees and how the sweetest half is the bottom, where all the juices nestle down as it hangs on the tree. I woke up the next morning and found the bottom half of a grapefruit waiting for me at the breakfast table. The weekend was not what I had planned, but my grief and my hope were nurtured for a little while by June and Bert's hospitality. We hear today the story of Paul, Silas, and Timothy. They're making their way witnessing to Jesus without a grand plan. They're living day by day, trusting the Holy Spirit will be their GPS. And Paul has a vision where a man calls him to Macedonia. So Paul goes and through a lot of twists and turns, finds a prayer gathering outside the city. It's not a man he meets, but a woman, Lydia. And Lydia unexpectedly meets Paul. She's known as a purveyor of purple fabric. And she listens to Paul, hears about Jesus, and her heart is open to share what she has so she can find her place in what God is doing. She offers her home as a place for them to stay for a while. She gives what she has and she creates space for a relationship to take root. Maybe it doesn't even feel like a story worth sharing, but somehow Luke has included it in this book of the Acts of the Apostles. And there's something holy and spirit-filled about the hospitality that Lydia offers. It is a part of God's larger vision to share his love with the world. 
Now we live in a transactional culture. In just a click, you can book a vacation, watch a movie, find a date, order groceries, make a contribution to church. Thanks for that, by the way. Luke certainly includes the transactional details of the early church, but he mostly stops to tell the story of relationships, of people who get caught up in what God is doing in the world. And it's a mess of humanness, and I think there's something that we're meant to get caught up into. Faith is not meant to be convenient or sterile. Faith is relational, taking root in the daily, the missteps, the unexciting. It's transferred person by person and, and often takes time to sprout. But its roots have staying power. It leaves a mark on the heart and with it, a call to extend it along. And if you think about it, Jesus' life was all about the relational, crossing boundaries, coming close, entering stories, eating, healing, touching, connecting, and eventually dying for people to connect to God and each other. We have ninth graders getting confirmed today. They stood at this font, or they were held at that font, or other fonts with their parents and godparents, and God spoke to them. I created you. I call you just as you are to share your presence and gifts with the world because the world needs what you have to give. It won't always go as planned or be easy, but I will always be with you offering grace and forgiveness. And other people will be with you too because you can't live this life alone. We, all of us, make a promise to each person who is baptized to know and celebrate their call in the world. And we say these words, I promise to be a faith partner with you and your families because it is a partnership between families and church community to nurture faith in children, to plant seeds and tend to them as they grow. Thad Lightfoot, a council member who died in 2020, used to say to me, Beth, I get goosebumps on baptism Sundays because we make promises. And I know these promises aren't just words that we say. We commit to doing what we promise. And so I'm just curious today, how are you living out the promises that you have made to these kids? How have you known and celebrated their call in the world? Because faith is past person to person. We need to know someone else's story and their part in it. You're not a spectator in the person sitting next to you's lives. You're a full participant. Nurturing faith in kids is not just something someone else does on Sunday mornings in the basement of the church or what happens here on Wednesday nights. These kids are our future. They are the ones who will lead and make decisions, voting when we can no longer vote, presiding at our funerals, and entrusted to care for all people, this church, and the earth. What has been your encounter in sharing your story and listening to theirs? Now, it's not just kids we're called to be in relationship with, of course, but the research tells us that for kids to have a vibrant faith, they need five adult mentors other than their parents who know and support them. Who are the kids that you show up for? Who showed up for you? All of this can seem overwhelming for introverts and extroverts alike, but hear this, you can do it. Faith flourishes when we offer what we have, when we dig in relationally. You see, hospitality is the both giving and receiving. Lydia did not only give, she received. And I hope in some way that Bert and June receive from me as well. Paul was called by God to share the love of Jesus with the Gentiles, but in order to live out this call, he needed to encounter Lydia 
and the gift of hospitality that she had to give, step by step, person by person, story by story, the love of Jesus is proclaimed. Our focus is to reconnect to each other and rebuild community, and it's going to take all of us to do it. We've been away from each other for the last couple years, and we have missed the moments, the connection, the opportunity to show up for the sake of another. But we don't do it alone. The Holy Spirit tags along too, stirring, as we say, to churn up the living waters within each of us, surprising us to nudge us to try, to create opportunities to encounter and to be in relationship with someone you know nothing about, giving you the opportunity to listen more than you speak, to remind you that you have a gift to give. I never knew Lydia, the purveyor of purple cloth, Bert, the teacher of grapefruit trees, and June, the artist, have since died. But all in their unique way shared the gift of hospitality. What will you be known for? You have to share it. You have to give it to another for it to be made known. So go and do it. Amen. We offer our lives, our gifts, and our talents, our financial resources, and especially our peace. During this time, your offering to support the mission we have here at Mount Olivet may be placed in the basket in front 
or at, uh, in the box at the welcome counter. Kids, your donations go to feed hungry people in the wor world. Now receive these words. The peace of God be with you all. If you are online, please type in comments of peace and we will receive them. And if you are here, please share and receive a sign of God's grace and peace with one another. Peace, Benji. My spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. Let the king beware, for your justice has every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food that they can never earn. Fair a table spread, every mouth be fed, for the word is about to turn. Shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away your tears for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations rage from age to we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. The saving word that our purpose heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God, who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away your tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn, and the world is about to turn.
Thank you for that beautiful offering. <laughs> we give thanks now for our offering. God of the resurrection, we give these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love in the world. With these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and open hands. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me and again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we meet at this table week after week, and it sustains us to meet Christ here. In this small piece of bread, in this sip of wine, we find the very presence of Jesus, and it fills us for the journey, and it reminds us that we are whole, just as we are. So then we can offer whatever it is that we have to share so open your hearts to this abundant blessing of God's grace so that you may also be a blessing in this broken world. As you come up, uh, a reminder that all wafers are gluten-free, wine in the cups is dark in color, and the juice is light. Come now, for it is Christ who is the host of this table, and all has been prepared.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We enter now into a time of community prayer um, here at Mount Olivet. Um, I will lead our first prayer petition together and then I will ask if um, those of you here or online have um, prayer requests this morning and we can speak into those. So um, uh, if you are online, please um, type your prayer into the comments and we, we will receive those prayers and speak them here. Let us pray. God of new life, we see how Paul and Timothy and Silas have a specific idea about what they are going to do, and then they meet up with someone they don't expect. Um, and that provides impetus for a totally new ministry based on the gifts that she has to offer, that they, the gifts they have to offer. So open this church community up to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work in and through us and the gifts that we each have to offer in our 
summer months ahead guide the council and pastors and staff and lay leaders in our visioning, in our discernment, in our partnerships, in our relationships, and in our planning for the future. Help us move nimbly with your will, O oh God, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. What prayers um, do you have today, dear friends? Yes, Karen. I need to hear that a little clearer. God of uh, healing and restoration, um, we pray with Karen Fisher um, for her granddaughter, Brianna, who is giving her grandnephew a kidney tomorrow. What a gift. Speaking of gifts, that is the greatest gift uh, one could offer um, in this uh, tender and fragile situation. God, just we pray for Brianna and for uh, Karen's grandnephew. Um, we pray for a successful surgery. Uh, we pray for um, a wonderful care team. We pray for um, healing of bodies um, and for a sense that God is present in all um, that is to come and in the um, healing and restoration of these two uh, these two beautiful people um, god in your mercy hear our prayer yes bob God, um, you are always helping us become something new. Um, and so Bob Swanson is praying for the compromands. Um, so continue to speak into their lives. Um, remind them that they are yours. Um, bless all of the students who are being confirmed today. Um, and... Um, Continue to guide them, God, as they um, continue to ask questions and to wonder and to wrestle and pray like we all do. Um, stumble and serve as we all do. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, Beth McGrew King, prayer of thanks for all the volunteers who've helped with packing and setting up for Kid Pack, the weekend snack packs for Northport um, Elementary this school year, and a special thanks for um, Kim, Dun Kim Dunford, Randy and Luann Svensson, who lead our packing and set up teams this year. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, okay. And uh, Ruth Broman, um, giving thanks for Jeannie and Laura. Um, Ben and Ruth's daughters, who will have birthdays yet this month, Jeannie on the 27th and Lori, Laura on the 28th. Um, for your extending family, Ruth and Ben, celebrating the life and the care and the love that your daughters share with you. God, in your mercy. Hear prayer. In your mercy, O oh God, res respond to these prayers. Renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I hope you noticed something different and new when you walked in today, and that is some brand new furniture and spaces for community in the Welcome Center. And um, we want to rebuild and connect with each other, and our space needs to do just the same. So ambient lighting versus these big overhead lights, comfortable furniture, 
and it's there for us to use. I wrote a bit of my sermon. I, I wrote a bit of my sermon there this week. I hope our mail carrier will stop and have lunch there. And for all of you, Sundays or any time during the week, to be able to gather and invest in community that way. You will also notice on the angle wall when you walk out to the fireside room that we have brand new bulletin boards um, and photos coming to keep us all up to date with what the young kids and older kids are up to, not only at church, but in their own lives for us to be in relationship with each other. And so uh, we're pretty excited about it and I hope you are too in the ways that we're investing to create space here at Mount Olivet. Um, couple notes for you. Uh, next week, we move to a summer schedule. So that means um, here in the sanctuary at 9 o'clock, just as we are right now, but our 1045 service will be outside in the grove, weather permitting. Um, I think we are at our best in the summer, very relaxed um, space to really appreciate uh, creation around us. And our band is so nimble and the tech wonderful tech people as well to get us outside. We will only be live streaming at nine o'clock. So if you are online, um, you can find the service at any time. It's on uh, the Facebook feed at Mount Olivet, but it will be the nine o'clock service. It's just harder for us to get our equipment outside. And with the uh, summer weather heat, sometimes that makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, but we're really looking forward to that starting Memorial weekend through Labor Day weekend to be on our summer schedule. And then if you have uh, your body willing to work, we have a Habitat build coming up in early June and we have half the spaces filled, uh, but we need to fill the other ones. So June uh, 2nd and 3rd, and I believe that's in Moundsview, so it's not too far from here to help our partner Habitat for Humanity uh, be a part of creating a home for someone else. You can sign up online or if you have questions, invite us, ask us about that as well. Um, so for worship today, we're deeply grateful for the way that God is connecting us to each other for what each of us has to give. Go give it. So I invite you now to stand as we close together in song. And now may the loving power of God, which raised Jesus from the dead, strengthen you with the Spirit and bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.